Hello, welcome. In this video, in this video, I'm gonna show you in Unreal how we can use the smoke for the book texture. So in Unreal, I just have imported my texture and let's use that. So what we need to do, of course, is we need to make a material. So right click material and we can just call this like um, smokes, something like that. When we open our material, I'm also going to immediately drag in my uh, texture here. So let's open that. And of course, to have like a smoke texture, we need to have like a certain opacity and blending mode. So the first thing that we want to do with this material is change this. So either go with like a translucent material or like an additive material. So one of them will do fine. So when we do that, we will have like different inputs here. So this texture itself, uh, if you look at it, it will hold like an alpha value, which is actually like the actual masking value. Uh, so you can see like this is the actual mask. Now, since I have not actually rendered out, as you can see, like I've not actually rendered out any colors uh, because I just had like a grayscale value anyway, uh, we can directly plug that in the opacity. So it's all fine. So in case you would have actually color on your uh, render, then of course you need to use the alpha. So that's the first step. So if we just now take a look, uh, we also need to give this a base color. So let's bring in a color. And uh, we can also already like right click, convert to parameter, for example, call this color. And we can now uh, make this into like a light gray. And you should be able to see our texture. So it's very subtle here. Um, and for the moment being, I'm actually gonna boost my uh, color here with the emissive. So I'm going to multiply this by maybe let's say 10. This is just purely for visualizing it because I rendered out a quite subtle effect and now we can actually see what's going on. So as you can see, now we can see our texture flipbook here. So we can see the individual smoke pieces. With this, we can already like try to visualize this in our uh, scene here, for example. I can just uh, grab a plane scale the zap and direct my material on it and as you can see we now have like our texture sheet here as well now let's actually talk about the flipbook animation for this so we have our information here ready to go but now we need to find out how can we actually loop over them one by one and unreal by default has some things for that so we can here have the flipbook node by default uh, which we will use in a moment but if you are a bit more looking for another one, we have also like flipbook with motion vectors. So if you remember from the Houdini part, we could actually render out other things like motion vectors, normals, the multi-directional contribution, things like that. So this node becomes more interesting if you have other textures available, especially of course the motion vectors. So for this tutorial, we're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna go with the flipbook. But just know that this thing exists and we can actually benefit from having multiple textures in the project. Now let's use this over here. So the flipbook itself, uh, we have an animation, I'm just going to leave it as this, and then we have our rows and columns. So in my case, they are the same. They are eight by eight. I'm just going to here bring a note, call this eight and plug it in like so. So eight by eight. Then we need to plug in our texture and we cannot just directly plug this in over here. We actually need to create uh, the texture uh, object here. So this node will be able to now plug in over here. So make sure you are, uh, of course, plugging in the right texture. So here we need to plug in our own texture. And we can already, of course, convert this into a parameter. And we can just call this like flip book texture or something like so. Uh, then here we have other things like UVs and some mapping and clamping. Uh, but for now, uh, let's already try this out. So we're not going to use this node anymore. We're just basically going to use our result in the opacity. And as you can see, it should all automatically work by default. So I'm going to press save. And you will see that now this thing works. So it works like expected. So I have now like a very simple plain card that I can place in my scene like so. And I can have like smokes here and there appear. So that's like the very basic thing you can do with this. Now, next step is you might actually want to make a particle out of this. 
So if you're just looking for placing this on like a flat geometry, your, your approach will probably be something like this. So you just have the texture, the flip book, and then have it working. So let's say you actually want to use this now in a particle setup. So let's create uh, a particle. So I'm going to go to VFX and say Niagara system. I'm going to say new system. And we're going to here uh, grab our template that says simple sprite burst. So click on the plus icon and say finish. So this can be our uh, effects of, for example, basic spokes one. Let's open that. And here we then have like one single sprite bursting in and out, as you can see. So just bursting. So we want to replace this by our own material. So we're going to overwrite here the sprite material with our own smokes material. So here, smoke. And now you should be able to see here this smoke material. So you should be able to see that. So by, by itself here, this is actually already working. Uh, what we can actually maybe also do is uh, have like a UV pivot offset. I'm going to press here the Y on 1. And this will actually nicely sit now on the grid like so. So I can drag my particle here uh, like so and it will spawn. Uh, it's probably like super small here. So to make this a bit bigger, we're going to go here to uh, particle, initialize particle. And we're going to here set our value to 500 and press save. And you should see that now uh, this should be bigger. So this is now a normal size. So we are only like spawning this for a couple seconds and it will disappear because it's like a burst effect. Um, you can like change the lifetime. Maybe I will change the lifetime to 10 seconds just to make things a bit easier. So now it will be here for 10 seconds. Now we actually might want to change our material if we want to use a particle. So the particle system or Niagara system actually has like zip UV or uh, flipbook options built in itself. So here we have like zip UV option, which is basically set to one, but we actually need to set this by eight by eight because we have eight different, uh, because we have eight by eight frames over here. And we also have uh, notes for this. So if I would now type in animation, we have zip UV animation, and this is actually referencing or referring to that flipbook that we have. So we actually need to modify our material and let's do that. So what we will do is we actually need to input directly our flipbook like so. So this will be directly what we will have. And what we can also do here is of course, we can ask our particle color. So if we color my particle in a certain color, we have that information. So let's multiply that. So here like so, so multiply my current value with a particle color, and then you have that over here. So let's press save and go back to Niagara. And we can see that we now have basically like our big spreadsheet. So we need to set here sub UVs, which is of course eight by eight. And now we of course filtered out into like a single frame of that. Now to have that animation there, we need to include here our animation. So sub UV animation. And you will see that by default, it will work. It will probably be looking like this. Maybe like it looks like a bit laggy. And that is because we are looping like one time over 10 seconds. So we're actually dragging out uh, our loop into like a, a longer time. So if you just increase the loops, you'll see that will now play actually way more smoother. What could also be cool to do is well, right now we actually are using the sub UV animation mode linear. Uh, but we can change this to curve so we can control this by curve we can also set this to random but now it will basically randomly pick a certain frame number which is maybe not interesting for this one but we can also set this to infinite so now we just like infinite loop and with infinite looping we can now set a play rate so if i lower this it will we will slow down we can even reverse this so we can speed this up or like slow this bit down like so we can also have a uh, offsetting time. So here we can offset the time whenever it starts. And this becomes interesting when we, for example, would now start to spawn more of them. So if we go to our spawn bursting effect, we only spawn one. So our spawning count is one. So if we increase this to, uh, let's say 15, we will spawn 15 of these flames 
but they are probably like the same frame and also on the same position of course so if we want to change the starting frame we need to include some more random value so let's say we want to include a random float and you can see that we now actually have like a more random value because they are now looking very strange uh, so you can like play around with that uh, so let's say a maximum from 0 to uh, to 20 or something like that so we have like a variation in when the particle spawns of course they're now all spawning on each other which is not that nice so we're gonna go here into uh, our particle spawning and we're gonna say spawn in a box location so the particles will now spawn in like a box area and this box area can be let's say 400 by 400 by uh, maybe 10 because they should all stick to the ground so now we have an effect like that uh, furthermore uh, so we are almost done you should, you should have like a particle like so uh, we can of course uh, play around a bit more with uh, our scaling value for example so here our particle is always the size 500 so we can set this to a uh, random uniform let's say we can scale from 200 to 500 and now we have like more randomness in there uh, we can also here do random rotations and random uv mode and this might be interesting to have like a random x value which will bring some more variation and of course what we can also do is we can add some colors so add some colors and we're going to go here and what we're going to do is we want to actually control the color over time so the best way to do that is by using a curve so we will now go from like this white value to white value which is not interesting so let's go from maybe some like a red value we can make this very intense like this is like some flame like uh, and what is interesting if you use the additive mode here in the material so this is set to additive mode is if the base color here gets darker the, or the opacity will also automatically get darker so if i now would set this to like a very dark value you will see that over time this will actually sort of like fade away automatically so as you can see here like it would slowly start to fade into thin air so that's just basically this ramp uh, so here uh, so here we should see it over here as well so we now created like this very basic flame effect so out of this one single basic flip book we actually created like a basic flame effect here inside of unreal so every time i would compile you can see we have like different results of flames uh, and there are more things you can start to do and, and edit here this is like a very basic example that i wanted to show you and that was basically it then for this video so i'm just showing here how we can use this flipbook inside of unreal to create like something very basic uh, either with a particle or just drag and dropping on a geometry so i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching